Ben 10 Ultimate Alien is one of the most beloved series from the Ben 10 universe. It is the third installment in the Ben 10 franchise and continues where the previous series, Ben 10 Alien Force, left off. In the series, Ben is now 16 years old and has gained a new set of aliens in his Omnitrix, including ultimate forms of some of his original aliens. And frankly speaking, these ultimate forms are the main reason why I love this show as a teenager. It's about time we make a video on this show. That's right, today, we are gonna cover the entirety of Ben 10 Ultimate Alien from start to finish. So wear your Omnitrix and grab your smoothies, cause this is going to be a fun video. Season 1. The show kicks off with this wild video outing Ben's secret identity to the world, and suddenly, paparazzi are swarming his place like there's no tomorrow. Ben being the hero he is, morphs into Humongous are to scare them off. Later, Kevin traces the leap back to a 10-year-old superfan named Jimmy Jones. Turns out, Jimmy pieced together Ben's hero identity from alien sightings, thinking he'd make Ben a star. Little did he know, it turned Ben's life upside down. While at Jimmy's house, they discover alien activity in Florida through a security camera and head there in Kevin's jet, but Ben's attempt to help the Air Force lands him in jail. Gwen and Kevin use their plumber badges to release Ben, and Colonel Rosam informs them of an alien collecting parts from a NASA rocket. When the alien arrives, Ben fights it as Chromostone but is defeated. The alien called Bivolvin reveals he's from the Andromeda Galaxy and was captured by a villain named Agregor. Now he is collecting parts to make a ship that will send him back home. There is one catch though, the ship at launch will blow up the entirety of Florida. Hearing this, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin resolve to help Bivolvin go home and prevent a nuclear bomb from detonating, but Bivolvin is not on board with their plan. A battle breaks out, and Ben pulls out the ultimate spider monkey, which helps him restrain the alien. As Ben leaves him in the cave for plumbers, he is welcomed as a hero at school, even by former bullies JT and Cash. But surprise, surprise, Agregor swoops in and snatches Bivolvin, kicking off a whole new set of challenges for our hero trio. Later, Ben busts up a museum Hess by two forever knights using an alien tank, causing him to show up late to Julie's tennis match. Now Kevin's all about investigating the forever knight robbery, but Gwen's more interested in the tennis match. Ben wants to do both and catch a movie too. So he turns into Echo Echo, and splits himself into three clones, each with a different mission. Ben number one hits the movies, Ben number two teams up with Kevin to solve the case, and Ben number three stays at the match. What he doesn't know is that each clone has its own personality. Ben number three ends up embarrassing Julie at the match, while Ben number two gets all emotional with Kevin, which just annoys him. And Ben number one? Well, he's blissfully unaware, enjoying the movie without a clue about the chaos. Meanwhile, the knights are busy tunneling under the museum. Ben number two and Kevin stumble upon them, causing Ben number two to go full humongousaur and take down the knights. But then, the knight's big boss, Urien, activates some ancient armor and Ben number two is in over his head. He emerges with the other clones to tackle Urien but their lack of coordination gets them beaten. Eventually, Ben transforms into Lodestar and defeats Urien. But Julie is still upset. Ben, realizing his mistake, apologizes, but accidentally reveals he watched the movie, angering Julie further. She, Gwen, and Kevin leave, leaving Ben to regret his actions. Ben's mother, Sandra, is washing dishes, unaware of 7-7 sneaking up on her. However, Max intervenes just in time and defeats 7-7 without Sandra noticing. Max realizes that Ben's enemies are targeting his family and decides to find a way to stop the attacks. Meanwhile, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin defeat Rojo and her biker gang who are robbing a train. Max arrives and informs them about the organized attacks on Ben's family by his old enemies. Gwen is outraged, while Kevin suggesting more aggressive approach to deal with anyone targeting their families. Charmcaster, Vulcanus, and Zombozo join forces to seek revenge on Ben. Zombozo targets Sandra at Mr. Smoothie. Zombozo later kidnaps Sandra. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin infiltrate Zombozo's hideout to rescue Sandra. Each confronts a different villain, with Ben transforming into Ultimate Big Chill to defeat Vulcanus army. Gwen, angered by Zombozo's cruelty, unleashes her anodic powers to save Sandra and warns the villains to leave the Tennyson family alone. After saving Sandra, Gwen and Sandra sit together, with Gwen offering her candy floss. Sandra declines, citing processed sugar as poison. When Ben and Kevin arrive, Gwen reassures them that they don't have to worry about Zombozo anymore, hinting at an agreement reached with him. Ben encounters Serpent on a rampage and quickly defeats him as four arms. Shortly after, he meets Oliver Thompson, a video game producer who wants to make Ben the star of his new game. Meanwhile, Gwen and Kevin argue over Gwen's driving skills, prompting Ben to offer to teach her. Ben demonstrates his alien's abilities to Oliver, 
Unaware that Oliver is actually working for the news reporter Will Harain, who plans to use the information to create a powerful robot to destroy Ben. During Gwen's driving lesson, they are attacked by Harang's robot, the Stalker. Ben tries several transformations to stop it, but fails. Eventually, they realize the robot is after Gwen specifically. Harang frames Ben for the Stalker's attacks and challenges him to a showdown in Washington, D.C. Ben accepts, knowing it's a setup, but determined to stop Harang. In Washington, Ben battles the Stalker with Gwen and Kevin's help. When his usual tactics fail, Ben realizes the robot is using his own moves against him and resorts to using strategies from a Sumo Slammer video game. Ben defeats the Stalker with Nanomex help and destroys it to prevent Harang from rebuilding it. The next day, Harang complains about Ben's actions, but Gwen celebrates passing her driving tests and treats everyone to smoothies. Alright, now let's talk about a more lore-orientated episode. Four Arms jumps into action, facing off against a mind-controlled Yeti under the command of the notorious Dr. Anemo. Meanwhile, Gwen and Kevin work to shut down Anemo's mind control device. Ben, thinking on his feet, switches to Brainstorm to disrupt the mind control, causing the Yeti to turn on Anemo. With the villain out of commission, Kevin steps in to disable the device, putting a lid on Anemo's shenanigans. But the adventure doesn't end there. In Bellwood, our trio encounters Galapagus, a turtle like alien seeking Ben's aid. Galapagus reveals that he and his peaceful pals were nabbed by the sinister Agrigor, who absorbed their powers. While in captivity, it plotted an escape. Some tried a coup, but it flopped. Others, like Galapagus, Bivalvin, and Rad, call for help. Magister Gilhill answered the call but met a grim fate at Agregor's hands. After a daring escape, Agregor offered Galapagus freedom in exchange for his Paul's powers. But in a twist, Galapagus double-crossed Agregor, neutralized him, and led the group to Earth. Ben reaches out to the plumbers for backup, but Agregor disguised as one of them swoops in and snatches Galapagus to steal his powers, putting him one step closer to his ultimate plan. So there's this big money contest where contestants are vying to crack open a safe, but guess what? It's not a safe at all. It's the containment suit of the alien Pandor, one of the five aliens who Agregor wants to capture. Kevin tries to set Pandor free but backs off due to the radiation Pandor's body emits. Kevin accidentally leaves behind a crucial piece of Tadenite, which can bust open Andor's suit. Later, Kevin teams up with Ben and Gwen to help Pandor get back to his home planet. They track him to a flint mine. Ben, in his ultimate humongousor form, tries to stop Pandor but ends up causing a cave-in. Kevin steps up and saves the day by preventing the mine from collapsing. But then, Pandor kidnaps Kevin, hoping to make him absorb the Tadenite. Kevin resists at first, but Pandor tricks him into setting him free, transforming him into a supercharged energy being. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin team up to take down Pandor, but he absorbs energy from a power plant and grows to giant size. Ben switches to Big Chill to counter Pandor, but Pandor absorbs Kevin's matter, becoming even more formidable. Ben evolves into Ultimate Cannonbolt and with Kevin's help, manages to retrap Pandor in his suit. They arrange for the plumbers to return Pandor to his planet but their plans hit a snag when Agregor's ship swoops in and recaptures Pandor, along with Bivalvin and Galapagos. Now the team's on a mission to track down the remaining escapees, Andreas, and Rad. Argit, the sneaky little guy, offers insurance to the Forever Knights, but when they turn him down, their castle mysteriously crumbles. Meanwhile, Ben's enjoying his hero status at Mr. Smoothie, when the knights roll in and swipe the smoothie machine, which is totally out of character for them. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin start snooping around and discover that Argit's behind the knight's newfound junk food obsession, using a powerful alien named Andreas to scare them into doing his bidding. So Ben goes full Jatre to confront Argit, who tries to buy Kevin's loyalty with cold, hard cash. Gwen's not impressed, to say the least. Just when things couldn't get weirder, Sir Dagonet shows up and turns the knights against Ben's crew, leading to their capture. Locked up, Argit plays mind games and convinces the team to bust him and Andreas out. Ben morphs into Swamp Fire to take on the knights while Argit and the gang rescue Andreas. But just as they're about to escape, Dagonet pulls a dirty move and sets off a bomb. Andreas, in a noble act, sacrifices himself to save everyone. But the story doesn't end there. Agregor, the big bad, finds Andreas and heals him, adding him to his creepy collection of captive aliens. Agregor's pumped now that only Rad remains at large, hinting that things are about to get really interesting. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are out on a stormy night when they stumble upon Rad, a last of Agregor's prisoners. Rad ain't in the mood for chit-chat and goes all out attacking them. Ben transforms into Jatre for a sky-high showdown, ending with Rad knocked out cold. They haul Rad to Los Soldad where he spills the beans about Agregor's grand plan to absorb his pal's powers and rule the galaxy. Ben offers to join forces, 
But Riot ain't buying it and attacks, revealing Aggregor's been tracking them using the Ultimatrix. In a wild move to throw Aggregor off their trail, Riot tries to nuke the Ultimatrix. But it backfires, damaging it and making Riot vanish into thin air. Turns out he's hiding inside the Ultimatrix to dodge Aggregor's radar. But there's a twist. The only alien Ben can morph into is Amphibian, which is pretty much Rad himself. When Aggregor shows up, one teleports them to Kevin's hideout, where Kevin works his magic to reboot the Ultimatrix and split Ben from Rad. Rad makes a break for it, refusing Ben's offer to team up. Aggregor crashes into the warehouse and demands Amphibian, leading to a confrontation where Aggregor nearly kills Ben. Rad, seeing the danger, attacks Aggregor and saves Ben. In a final showdown, Rad sacrifices himself to stop Aggregor, causing a massive explosion that destroys the warehouse. Aggregor scoops up the injured Rad, leaving Ben swearing to use his newfound alien's powers to save his pals and put an end to Aggregor's reign of terror. Ben faces it off against a group of robbers who have taken Jennifer Nocturne hostage. As Spider Monkey, Ben defeats the criminals and earns a kiss from Jennifer, much to the jealousy of Captain Nemesis, Ben's idol. Back home, Ben finds Julie upset over the kiss, but she understands it's for publicity. Jennifer invites Ben to Nemesis' party, where Nemesis is visibly envious of Ben's popularity. After the party, Nemesis, seeking to outshine Ben, teams up with Harangue to stage a robot attack. Ben, as Armadrillo, defeats the robots, but Nemesis challenges him to a competition to prove who's the better hero. During the duel, Ben wins, humiliating Nemesis. In retaliation, Nemesis removes the safeguards on his suit, planning to use lethal force against Ben. Nemesis kidnaps Julie and Jennifer, leading to a final showdown. Ben, as ultimate humongousaur, defeats Nemesis, who then rebrands himself as Overlord. Overlord is defeated and arrested, while Harang paints Ben as the villain in the media. In the desert, Aggregor tries to escape with Rod, but the plumbers intervene. Aggregor's ship is damaged, preventing him from leaving Earth. Ben, Wen, and Kevin investigate and find Aggregor's ship. They fight Agrobots and Ben transforms into Lodestar, using his magnetic powers to try to stop the ship, but it explodes, seemingly killing him. However, Lodestar reforms and the team continues their pursuit. The team then heads to a military base where they learn a Gregor is after Professor Paradox of Chronologer. Colonel Rosam authorizes them to stop a Gregor but threatens to destroy the base if they fail. As they infiltrate the base, they face off against Agregor controlled Bivolvin, Galapagos, Pandor, Andreas, and Raad. With Max's help, they manage to free some of the aliens from Agregor's control. Agregor absorbs energy from the freed aliens and engages in a battle with the team. Despite Kevin's attempts to reason with him, Agregor becomes ultimate Agregor by fusing with all the aliens and gaining immense power. Ben transforms into Humundusaur and destroys the machine. But Agregor escapes, having absorbed the aliens' powers. Season 2 Agregor is now in his ultimate form after absorbing the powers of Bevelvin, Galapagos, Pandor, Andreas, and Rad, proving to be virtually invincible. He effortlessly defeats Ben, Gwen, Kevin, and Max, leaving them battered and incapacitated. After recovering, Ben meets Azmuth, who reveals Agregor's true objective. The map of Infinity, a powerful artifact divided into four pieces hidden across the galaxy. With the map, Agregor plans to gain unimaginable power by accessing the Forge of Creation. Forge of Creation is basically a place where new Alien X are born, and if one were to nab a baby Alien X while they are vulnerable, they could achieve unimaginable power. Azmuth sends Ben, Gwen, and Kevin on a mission to retrieve one of the map pieces before Agregor. They journey to the planet Mictalty, where extreme temperatures pose a deadly challenge. Despite the dangers, they reach the temple housing the map piece, but face resistance from the Guardian's white necrofrigians. Using his alien forms, Ben navigates the temple's traps and defeats the Guardians. With Gwen's guidance, they locate the map piece but trigger another trap, causing Gwen to become poisoned. As Agregor arrives, they race to retrieve the map piece while facing his threats. Despite their efforts, Agregor escapes with the map piece, leaving Ben, Gwen, and Kevin to barely escape the temple's dangers. As they recover, Ben vows to continue the fight, determined to stop Agregor from obtaining the remaining map pieces. The Forever Knights attempt to retrieve an alien artifact, but Ben, Gwen, and Kevin intervene. After defeating the Knights, the team encounters Cash and JT, who claim to be plumbers and are working with Oliver Thompson. Cash accidentally activates the artifact, turning it into a robot. Ben transforms into Taraspin to battle the robot while Cash and JT try to take credit for Ben's actions. The Forever Knights escape with the artifact's battery, prompting the team to track them down. 
Cash and GT reveal their plan to become famous by taking credit for Ben's heroics, but their scheme is overheard by Siphon, who believes them to be the masterminds behind Ben Tennyson. Siphon attacks Cash and GT with his robotic devices, blaming them for Vilgax's defeat. Ben transforms into Spider Monkey and later Ultimate Spider Monkey to fight Siphon, while Gwen and Kevin deal with the robotic devices. In the end, Cash and GT use the artifact to defeat Siphon, but their attempt to film the heroic act fails due to Oliver's camera running out of power. As a result, their plan backfires and they are left disgraced. Ben and his friends decide to quit their job of allowing Cash and GT to take credit for their actions. Magister Pike, a plumber, discovers Ultimate Agregor underwater on Piscius, but is defeated by him. Ben receives Pike's distress call and travels with Gwen and Kevin to Piscius to investigate. They are attacked by a sea monster that managed to defeat it with their modified plumber suits. However, Kevin's helmet cracks and he starts to drown. Gwen saves him by using a fish's ability to create a makeshift breathing helmet for him. They meet Pike, who helps them navigate the planet's dangers to reach Ultimate Agrigor. Ben battles sea creatures, and after some complications, transforms into Amphibian to enter the planet's core where Ultimate Agrigor is attempting to steal a crucial piece. They discover that the core piece is actually the second piece of the Map of Infinity, disguised by Professor Paradox. Ultimate Agrigor escapes with a core piece, and Ben pursues him as Big Chill. However, he fails to stop Ultimate Agrigor, who leaves Piscis. Ben tries to prevent the planet from shattering using his anti-gravity projector as a substitute, but the projector sucks him in. Fortunately, the planet resembles itself and Ben is saved. Pike, grateful for their help, clears up the misunderstanding about them stealing the core piece. Kevin sadly parts ways with the fish that saved him while Gwen comforts him. The team continues their mission to stop Ultimate Agrigor from collecting all the pieces of the Map of Infinity. At the start of the next episode, the group is chasing Ultimate Agrigor, who opens a portal to Legger Domain, a dimension made of pure mana, using a magical incantation. Unable to keep the portal open, Four Arms transforms back to Ben, but remembers the incantation's symbols. Gwen realizes Charmcaster can read the symbols and seeks her help. Charmcaster, initially hostile, agrees to help when Gwen mentions Agregor's portal. Charmcaster opens the portal, revealing her origins in Legger Domain and her increased magical powers when she is inside that dimension. Adwaitya, the ruler of Legger Domain, attacks them but they escape and are later attacked by stone creatures. Ben transforms into Chromastone and with Charmcaster's spell, they defeat the creatures. They reach a gap where Charmcaster hears her father's voice, but Gwen convinces her it's a trick. Continuing on, they encounter Palafang, Adwaitya's guard, whom Humungusor defeats. Adwaitya traps them in ice, but Ultimate Humungusor frees them and fights Adwaitya. During the battle, the Alpha Rune, Adwaitya's source of power is revealed to be a piece of the Map of Infinity. Agregor appears, takes the Alpha Rune, and escapes. Charmcaster helps the team escape, but stays behind to free her people. The portal seals and Ben promises Gwen they'll return for Charmcaster. With Agregor now possessing the third quarter of the Map of Infinity, the team has one last chance to stop him. Asmut's not happy with Ben, Gwen, and Kevin. They couldn't stop Ultimate Agregor from snagging three pieces of the Map of Infinity, so he zaps them to the Rust Bucket 3 near this huge artificial planet called the Perplexahedron. As they arrive, they see Agregor heading toward the planet and decide to chase him inside. Once in, it's like a maze of traps and security stuff. Luckily, Gwen's mana trail helps them find their way through the crazy halls. They take on some security drones, beat them, but end up getting split up. Ben and Kevin face all sorts of traps, like rooms filling with water and rooms with acid. They eventually find Gwen, who's been frozen solid by Agregor. Ben saves her, morphing into Swamp Fire, and then Gwen and Kevin share a sweet moment with a kiss before getting back to the mission. Ben figures out that the guards are guarding something big and hatches a plan to track them to the final piece of the map. They meet the Sentinel, who's got the last piece, his crown. But just as they're about to grab it, Agregor shows up. Ben tries to take on Agregor as ultimate cannonbolt but it's no use. Agregor gets the last piece of the map, leaving the team feeling pretty defeated. The Sentinel fades away, disappointed in Ben's loss. Despite all this, the team's determined to stop Agregor before he can pull off whatever his plan is. With ultimate Agregor in possession of all four pieces of the map of infinity, he plans to enter the Forge of Creation to absorb the powers of a newborn Celestial Sapien, which would make him unstoppable. Ben reveals that Kevin had installed a security system to prevent Alien X at accidental transformation and given the need of the hour, they unlock it to stop Agrigor. Inside Alien X, Ben tries to get Serena and Bellicus to cooperate but to no avail. 
Professor Paradox understands it's no use, so he reverts Alien X back into Ben and reveals that he can take them to the Forge of Creation. Paradox takes Ben, Gwen, and Kevin to the Forge of Creation's entrance, where he leaves them. While flying the Rust Bucket 3 into the Forge of Creation, they are attacked by Agrabots. Ben transforms into Terraspin to fight them off, but the ship is hit, causing Ben to fall into a time barrier. Gwen saves him, but young Ben emerges from the barrier as well. Young Ben fights Kevin, believing him to still be evil. Ben transforms into NRG and defeats Heatblast, thus saving Kevin. Young Ben helps free their ship, and they fly through the Forge of Creation, where they encounter a female celestial sipine holding an infant. Ultimate Agrigor arrives and attacks the team, and despite their efforts, he overpowers them with ease. Young Ben suggests Kevin absorb the Ultimatrix to defeat Agrigor, and Kevin does so, overpowering and defeating Agrigor. However, absorbing the Ultimatrix causes Kevin to go crazy with energy. Young Ben reasons with Kevin, who spares their lives but flees. Paradox congratulates them and returns Young Ben home, ensuring that because of this experience, he will trust Kevin in the future. Meanwhile, our Ben vows to take care of Kevin one way or the other. Ben and Gwen learn that Ultimate Kevin has been on a revenge spree against those who wronged him, including beating up a man named Barry over a forgotten debt. Meanwhile, in the Null Void in Karsakam, a prisoner named Truck tries to get Ultimate Kevin's attention, only to be beaten by him. Another prisoner named Quince covers for Ultimate Kevin, who is planning revenge against the Warden, Morgue. Ben and Gwen search Kevin's room and find a clue to his whereabouts. They teleport to the prison to warn Morgue, but he ignores them and confines them to a room until a supply ship arrives. While prisoners are mining, Ultimate Kevin has flashbacks to his time in prison as Kevin Eleven. He remembers his mentor, Coral, who taught him to control his anger and powers. However, Coral was killed by Morg during a riot instigated by him. In the present, Ben and Gwen confront Morg, who reveals his involvement in intergalactic drug trafficking. Morg activates the prisoners' collars, causing them intense pain. Ben transforms into Echo Echo to free them, but Ultimate Kevin is determined to kill Morg for Coral's death. A fight ensues, with Ben trying to stop Ultimate Kevin. When the mines collapse, Ben, Gwen, and Quince escape, but Ultimate Kevin is trapped with Morg. Gwen saves Morg, who is then arrested. Ben realizes that Ultimate Kevin is too dangerous, and suggests they may have to stop him permanently, much to Gwen's dismay. In a small hut, the Vredel brothers' father instructs Argit to change his son's failing scores at the Plumber's Academy, or face severe consequences. Later, while driving, Ben accidentally hits Argit, who survives and asks for their help to hide from Ultimate Kevin. They agree to take him to the Plumber's Academy, where Argit can proceed with a plan. Ultimate Kevin attacks them, but they manage to repel him temporarily. At the Plumber's Academy, Argit is taken into custody, while Ben and Gwen discuss their concerns about Ultimate Kevin. Argit tricks his escort and changes the Vredel brothers' scores, but the Academy is thrown into chaos when Ultimate Kevin arrives. Ben transforms into Ultimate Humungusor to fight Ultimate Kevin, but even that isn't on par with Kevin's strength. Gwen tries to intervene, and the only reason he spares her life is because they used to be lovers. The Vredel brothers join the fight, but since they are actually stupid, they accidentally launch a bomb that threatens to destroy the Academy. Ben transforms into Ultimate Echo Echo to contain the bomb and launch it into space, saving everyone. Ultimate Kevin seemingly kills Argit but spares him, believing him to be dead. Argit escapes punishment by pretending to be unconscious, and Ben and Gwen wonder if there's hope for Ultimate Kevin's redemption. Ultimate Kevin continues his rampage, absorbing powers from various individuals including Alan Albright, Helen, Pierce, Manny, and Dr. Victor. Ben decides to eliminate Kevin to stop him, but Gwen disagrees, believing there must be a way to help him. Their disagreement escalates into a physical fight, with Gwen trying to stop Ben from leaving. This is the first time Ben is so hell-bent on straight-up killing Kevin, which further shows the gravity of this situation. Ben transforms into various aliens to escape Gwen's attempts to restrain him. Eventually, he leaves, determined to confront Kevin. Ben attacks the Forever Knights to find Kevin's whereabouts, but they don't know. Meanwhile, Gwen seeks advice from Max, who agrees with Ben's decision. She then seeks help from Darkstar, who agrees to assist her. Ben, as Humongousaur, confronts Vulcanus for information on Kevin, but Gwen intervenes to stop him from harming Vulcanus. Darkstar offers his assistance to Ben, claiming he can predict Kevin's next move. Darkstar explains that they can use a salvaged piece of the Dominus Librium, an ancient artifact that could cure Kevin, to channel enough energy to cure him. Gwen encounters Kevin at Total Zone, where Kevin attacks her and absorbs her powers, causing her immense pain. In a desperate bid to stop Ultimate Kevin's rampage, Ben, Gwen, and Darkstar devise a plan to lure Kevin to Lowe's Soldad. Their Cooper, now grown and very handsome if I say so myself, 
has built a machine to drain Kevin's powers and return him to normal. Meanwhile, Kevin confronts Gwen at her house, blaming her for not helping him. Max intervenes but is quickly defeated by Kevin. Ben arrives and tries to reason with Kevin, but their confrontation escalates into a battle. Ultimately, Gwen uses her magic to fend off Kevin, allowing her to escape with Ben and Darkstar. As they regroup, Kevin tracks them down, leading to a fierce battle where Ben transforms into various aliens to fight Kevin. Despite their efforts, Kevin proves too powerful. However, Gwen's magic, coupled with Julie and Ship's help, temporarily stops Kevin, allowing them to flee to Los Soledad. Their Cooper and Darkstar's plan seems successful, as they drain Kevin's powers and return him to his normal self. However, Darkstar absorbs the excess energy, becoming all-powerful. Ben, aware of Darkstar's plan, uses a device to strip him of his stolen powers, returning everything to normal. With Kevin cured and the stolen powers returned to their rightful owners, including resurrecting deceased aliens, peace is restored. Kevin apologizes to Ben and Gwen reconciles with him, while Cooper receives gratitude for his role in restoring Kevin. And with that, we delve into the third season of Ben 10 Ultimate Alien. In the midst of a camping trip, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin encounter a crash alien spaceship. From it emerges a mysterious girl named Eunice who has lost her memory. As they offer her shelter and aid in recovering her memories, Ben and Eunice grow close, much to Gwen's jealousy. However, their peaceful day is interrupted when they are attacked by a bear and later by Sunder, who is after Eunice. During the confrontation, Eunice reveals surprising abilities including calming animals and displaying incredible strength. Sunder reveals that Eunice is actually an Omnitrix prototype called a Eumitrix and attempts to capture her. In the ensuing battle, Ben transforms into various aliens to fight Sunder, but is ultimately defeated. Gwen and Kevin manage to retrieve Eunice and with Azmuth's intervention, restore her to her human form. It is revealed that Eunice's human form was created from Gwen's DNA when she touched the alien ship and Azmuth offers Eunice a position as his assistant. As they depart, Eunice leaves behind a flower for Ben, marking the end of their brief but meaningful connection. On the distant planet monarch, Basil, who is basically the father of ship, steals gems from statues, who awaken to attack him. Ship hears Basil's cries for help and leaves Julie during tennis practice to assist his former owner. Julie seeks Ben's help to find Ship, but Ben, as Humungusor, initially refuses due to misunderstanding their relationship status. However, he later agrees after discussing it with Jimmy Jones. Jetre flies into space to find Ship and Basil, who are held captive by the alien race called Churls, which is led by Strabismus. Ship tries to save Basil, but is struck down. Ben arrives, but the aliens are hostile towards him. Gwen and Julie find Ship, and with Gwen's help, Ship recovers but refuses to return to Earth without saving Basil. They find Basil being tortured for the Oculent, a precious artifact that he is being accused of stealing. Julie and Ship's actions blow their cover, leading to a confrontation with the aliens. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are knocked out, but Ship merges with Julie to fight back. Ben, as Brainstorm, frees Basil, and a battle ensues with the aliens. Basil reveals he had swallowed the Oculent earlier, and Julie helps him retrieve it. The Sentinels, awakened by Ben's actions, go back to being stones when Julie returns their oculent. We, your humble servants, give thanks for- Do you mind? We're trying to have a conversation here. She then decides to keep ship and Ben apologizes for his behavior, promising to be a better boyfriend. Julie accepts and they reconcile happily. In the land of Zarkovia, Prince Jula is determined to use a dangerous weapon against rebels, but his servant, Fritz, urges him to consider peace. Tensions rise when King Sarian arrives and opposes Gula's plans, revealing the weapon to be the frozen body of Dr. Victor. Kazarian adamantly refuses to revive Victor, warning of the havoc it could unleash. Meanwhile, our team embarks on a mission to Zarkovia, but faces a sudden attack. Ben, taking on the forms of Echo Echo and later Ultimate Echo Echo, successfully thwarts the missile strike, but their aircraft crashes, leading to their capture by Zarkovian soldiers under Jula's command. Inside the castle, they stumble upon Victor's frozen form and realize Jula's sinister intentions to harness his power. Victor is revived and breaks free, overpowering the team and securing them in a dungeon alongside Xarian. In a stroke of luck, Gwen manages to free Xarian, who then activates the Ultimatrix, transforming Ben into the electrically charged Amphibian. Utilizing Amphibian's abilities, Xarian gains control over Victor and uses his powers to neutralize Eula's forces. Jula, however, manages to sever Victor's connection to Xarian, causing the king to collapse. Seizing the opportunity, Jula declares himself the new ruler. Yet Victor, under Xarian's control, suddenly reasserts his authority and orders Jula's arrest for treason. 
A fierce battle ensues as Victor combats rebels and withstands the team's attacks until Gwen freezes him, allowing them to escape. But you made a terrible enemy this day. I will be free. Ben experiences a disturbing nightmare involving Victor Validus and wakes to find Victor attacking him. Transforming into Cannonbolt, Ben fights back but is overpowered. Victor transforms into microchips and escapes. Ben manages to grab a sample of the microchips left behind. Convincing Gwen and Kevin of the attack, they investigate Validus' laboratory but find only a janitor. They then seek Elena's help the Plumber's Academy. Elena reveals she's been studying microchips but claims the one Ben has isn't hers. They are attacked by Victor again, prompting concern about his true status. Visiting Victor's grave, they confirm his body is buried there, implying the attacker is a clone. Julie's kidnapping leads them to suspect Alina, but they discover her father's janitor is involved. Elena denies involvement, but is later revealed to be the true queen of the microchips. Elena captures Julie, revealing her obsession with Ben. Ben confronts Alina, urging her to resist the microchips' control. Julie's words finally reach Alina, and she sacrifices herself to destroy the microchips. Feeling remorseful, Ben wishes he could have saved Alina. As they leave, the microchips show signs of life, hinting at further trouble ahead. In a future where Ben has become Ben 10,000, Enon attacks Ben's headquarters. Ben 10,000 fights back using his Ultimatrix, and transforms into Ultimate Ben to defeat Eon and his minions. However, Paradox warns Ben 10,000 that Eon is not truly defeated and is targeting alternate versions of Ben across different timelines. In the present, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin discover the hands of Armageddon, which releases some of Eon's minions when Ben touches it. After defeating the minions, they disappear. Paradox reveals to Ben 10,000 that Eon is still alive and is destroying alternate versions of Ben, including his past self. To stop Eon, Paradox and Ben 10,000 travel to the past to meet Ben, Gwen, and Kevin. Ben 10,000 explains that he is a different future version than the one Ben met when he was 10, and he is Ben's real future. Are you? That's right, Ben. I'm you. Only even more awesome. Paradox explains that the Hands of Armageddon is causing their troubles and must be destroyed. Despite their efforts, the Hands of Armageddon is reactivated, releasing more servants. Ben transforms into Goop, and Ben 10,000 becomes Ultimate Ben to fight. When Eon emerges from a portal, he transforms way big into a disintegrating statue. Ben transforms into Swamp Fire, and then Ultimate Swamp Fire to fight back. Eon reveals his plan to absorb and enslave all versions of Ben to create a new timeline where he is the only Ben Tennyson. However, Jitray destroys the hands of Armageddon, restoring the timelines Eon altered and defeating him. Before leaving, Paradox warns the team about Old George and the creature from beyond. Ultimate Ben unlocks all of his remaining aliens from when Ben was age 10 and adds several new aliens to annoy Azmuth. They have a love-hate relationship. And that, my friends, is the beginning of what we call the Dagon Arc. Sir Reginald and his team of Forever Knights uncover a cache of alien weaponry, but accidentally release a dangerous creature from behind his seal. Meanwhile, retired Forever Knight Old George senses trouble and leaves his retirement home. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin investigate the disturbance caused by the creature and encounter Sir Cyrus, who blames them for releasing it. They team up to search for the missing knights and the creature. In town, the creature attacks a police officer, but Ben stops the knights from harming it. Gwen and Kevin rescue the officer, but the creature kidnaps Winston, a squire. Gwen learns the creature called Lucubra feeds on thoughts and controls its victims. They track it to an abandoned warehouse, where Gwen breaks free from its control. Ben and Kevin fight the Lucubra, with Gwen sealing it away. Afterwards, Sir Cyrus warns Ben's team to stay out of Knight's business. The Knights warn Winston against associating with them due to their alien heritage, cause you know, the Knight's whole mission is to wipe the entire alien race from planet Earth. In the end, Winston briefly shows signs of being under Lucumber's influence before shaking it off. Also, Old George is saddened by the events and walks away when he learns that the seal has seen some better days. So George pulls off a wild move and makes Area 51 vanish, leaving everyone stunned. Team Ben, along with Max Cooper and Colonel Rosam, jump into action to figure out what's going on. Ben discovers an underground facility at Area 51 with a hopping 775 alien prisoners, but one of them has gone missing. The escapee takes off in Cooper's ship and Ben, morphing into Wrath, tries to catch him but misses. The ship crashes and starts to blow, but Gwen steps in and shields the team. They find a guard who's been attacked by the escapee, now known as Prisoner 775. They also learn that he's out for revenge on Colonel Rosam for locking him up and causing his family's demise. He will feel the pain I have felt. 
The team finds and battles 775 who flees to Florida to hunt down Rosam. They track him down and Ben, going ultimate wildmut, stops 775 from harming Rosam. Seeing how his past actions almost cost him his own family, Rosam is taken aback by 775's tragic history. The plumbers nab 775 and Ben unlocks Tremalian's transformation with the Omnitrix's skin feature. Overkill! Well? Well? Ben, Gwen, Kevin, and Max are cleaning Rust Bucket 2 when Gwen finds a bracelet that belongs to Verdona, Max's old flame, and an alien. Max tells them the story of how he first met Verdona. In a flashback, a young Max in the Air Force shoots down a UFO and is scolded by his superior. He is then approached by a colonel who recruits him into the space program. At a diner, Max meets Verdona, a red-haired woman, and they flirt until they are attacked by a synthroid, a humanoid machine. Max and Verdona escape and the synthroid pursues them. They take refuge at an abandoned gas station, where Verdona explains she is an alien and the synthroid is trying to kidnap her. Also, the bracelet on her arm, the same one Gwen found, has most of her powers except for the telepathy and the synthroid is after it not knowing it won't do them any good. Max tries to remove the bracelet inhibiting Verdona's powers but fails. The synthroid captures Verdona and reveals its plan to use her powers to benefit its species. Max, with the help of Magister Labrid, defeats the synthroid and Verdona is freed from her bracelet, revealing her true anabite form. Verdona thanks Max and offers him anything he desires, but he declines, wanting to achieve his goals himself. With that, Verdona kisses Max and flies away. In the present, Max ends the story and they all move into the rust bucket, leaving Max outside to reminisce about Verdona. During a tense meeting among the Forever Knights, chaos erupts when Sir Driscoll accuses Urien of wasting his time, leading to a confrontation. Old George arrives and scolds them for their division, prompting Driscoll to attack him. However, George easily defeats Driscoll and reveals his true identity as the founder of the Order. Driscoll and the other kings kneel before him as George unites the factions and vows to rid Earth of aliens. Meanwhile, Pierce, disguised with an ID mask, is confronted by Forever Knights, who demand he leave Earth. When he refuses, they literally kill him, revealing their intolerance towards aliens. Elsewhere, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin team up with Argot, who reveals the Knight's plan to expel aliens from Earth. Investigating a castle, they trigger an alarm, unleashing a mech dragon, but luckily for them, Ben defeats it as Lodestar. Upon learning from Mr. Bauman that aliens are being targeted, they set a trap at an alien food market. When the Knights attack, Ben challenges Driscoll to a duel as Ultimate Spider Monkey. Despite initial difficulties, Ben emerges victorious and demands the release of alien prisoners, threatening the Knights with dire consequences. As Driscoll reports his failure, George anticipates a larger conflict to come. The knights be ready. Ready for what, my lord? The battle of a hundred lifetimes. At a freak show, a man showcases an alien named Dagon in a fish tank. But little does he know, it is actually Vilgax who somehow survived his last encounter with Ben. Later, the show's owner is attacked by the Flame Keeper's Circle, who are mistaking Vilgax for their deity, Dagon. Julie leads Ben and Kevin to the organization's headquarters, where they meet Conduit Edwards. He believes Davin will return to solve Earth's problems, but Ben immediately distrusts Edwards, likening him to a con artist. Meanwhile, Gwen and Kevin delve into investigating a stolen plumber ship. Disguised as Chamaleon, Ben stealthily infiltrates the Flame Keeper's circle and uncovers Vilgax's true identity. Vilgax reveals that the circus owner saved him after his defeat, leading to the mistaken belief that he is Dagon. Vilgax then reveals his plan to utilize stolen plumber technology to regain his lost power. When Vilgax's followers attack Ben, he transforms into Big Chill and then Ultimate Big Chill to fend them off. Conduit Edwards, the organization's leader, threatens Julie to coerce Ben's surrender. However, it's revealed Julie was never truly in danger, and she sides with Ben after learning Vilgax's true identity. With Kevin and Gwen's help, Ben defeats Vilgax and his followers. Post-battle, Julie remains convinced of the benefits of alien technology for Earth, while Vilgax vows to enact drastic changes once he regains his strength. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are at Burger Shack when they see a commercial for a play called Ben 10 Live, starring a lookalike of Ben alongside real aliens. They attend the premiere where they witness Albedo posing as Ben and orchestrating a plot to destroy Earth. Even one's appearance is copied by dancers called the Gwinnettes. After the show, they confront Albedo, who reveals his identity and his desperate situation since escaping Vilgax's ship. Albedo attacks them, prompting Ben to chase after him while Gwen and Kevin deal with a sound wave grenade. In Nemesis Tower, Ben encounters actors portraying aliens from the play and defeats them. They find the real Albedo, who surrenders after Hive, a humongous actor. 
reveals Albedo's true plan to set off a doomsday bomb. Rushing to the warehouse, they discover Albedo's intent to rewrite humanity's DNA to resemble Ben. Despite their efforts, the bomb explodes, but everyone survives. Albedo reveals his true Galvan form gained from the explosion, but his transformation is temporary due to interference from the Ultimatrix. Albedo blames Ben for his predicament and attacks him, leading to a battle where Ben emerges victorious with the help of Ultimate Echo Echo. The aliens take Albedo away, and Ben is left facing a lawsuit from the theater owners. He seeks Gwen's legal assistance to handle the situation. Ben and Gwen are driving Julie to the airport for her next tennis match when they receive a police report about Serpent escaping from prison. Ben decides to go after Serpent, leaving Gwen to help Julie at the airport. At the warehouse where Serpent is hiding, Ben, transformed into Goop, falls into a trap set by Serpent, but is saved by Julie distracting Serpent and shutting off the machine. Later at Ben's house, Julie allows Ben to stay home while she, Gwen, and Kevin go shopping, which is quite unusual for her. At the mall, Gwen questions Julie's decisions and Julie falls down an elevator shaft, injuring her ankle. Ben arrives to investigate the mall and discovers nothing wrong with the elevator. When it accidentally activates, Julie's eyes glow briefly, which indicates she stopped it using some magical powers. Later, after watching a movie with Julie, Ben leaves to look for Serpent and Kevin follows Julie, only to be attacked by creatures. Ben, as way big, saves Kevin and gets curious about Julie's behavior. He confronts Julie at her house and realizes she's an imposter, Elena Validus, using microchips to pose as Julie. Elena admits to her actions and fights Ben, but the real Julie intervenes, convincing Elena to spare Ben and leave. Elena vows to return, leaving Ben and Julie worried about her next move. Ben and the team are fighting a red robot in the streets when Kevin and Gwen realize that Ben is not in control of his actions. Humongousaur evolves into Ultimate Humongousaur and defeats the robot, but then attacks Gwen and Kevin. One suspects that Albedo is controlling Ben, but Kevin thinks Ben just hit his head. They try to stop Ultimate Humongousaur, but he refuses to listen. Gwen uses his spell to try to return Ben to normal, but he continues to attack. After some trial and error, Gwen sends her astral form into the Ultimatrix to find Ben, while Kevin seeks help from Azmuth. Inside the Ultimatrix, Ben encounters all his Ultimates who all want to kill him to be free. He tries to reason with them, but they overpower him. Gwen arrives just in time and saves Ben who then defeats the ultimate forms and sends them back into the Ultimatrix. Meanwhile, Kevin crashes the Rust Bucket 3 on Galvin Prime and seeks help from Azimuth to save Ben. Back on Earth, one helps Ben escape from the ultimate forms and confronts sentient ultimate Humungusaur. Wen prepares to destroy the ultimates, but Ben stops her, deciding to sacrifice himself to set the ultimates free. He kisses Gwen goodbye and jumps into a pit of fire, seemingly sacrificing himself. However, Ben wakes up outside the Ultimatrix with Gwen, Kevin, and the Ultimates as Azimuth explains that Ben's sacrifice freed the Ultimates and spared his life. Azimuth fixes the Ultimatrix, and Ben learns that the Ultimates will now be a reflection of him, without their own consciousness. Azimuth opens a portal to send the Ultimates to a peaceful planet, and sentient Ultimate Humungusaur apologizes to Ben before they leave. Ben is proud of his actions, and Kevin invites Ben and Gwen to Burger Shack to celebrate. Gwen is surprised by Kevin's gesture, but he says it's the least he can do for his best girl and his best friend. Ben, Gwen, Kevin, and a squad of plumbers battle the Esoterica, who plan to restore Vilgax's power by taking him to Dagon's heart. During the fight, the Esoterica detonate explosives and escape. Kevin captures one member, revealing him as Winston, the squire of the Forever Knights, who had been mind-controlled by the Lucubra, allowing Dagon to control him. They take Winston to the Forever Knights, where Ben confronts Sir Cyrus and Sir Driscoll. Ben learns of the legend of St. George who fought Dagon in the Middle Ages. George used his sword as Cullen to rip out Dagon's heart, diminishing his power and sealing him in his own dimension. Ben demands to speak with George, believing him to be alive. Dagon takes control of Gwen and explains that if Vilgax gets his heart, he can control the universe. Driscoll takes them to George, but the knights betray them, locking them up. The knights find George an invisible shrine built by the Esoterica. George attempts to retrieve the heart, but is pulled back by a tentacle. Vilgax, now in possession of the heart, gains new powers and defeats the knights in Esoterica. The team escapes and Gwen teleports Ben and Kevin to the scene. However, Vilgax breaks the seal and is sucked into Dagon's dimension. Old George, who revealed himself as the first forever knight, prepares for the coming battle. Let the dragon come. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin witness Sir George retrieving his sword and preparing to face the Dagon. Azimuth arrives and claims ownership of the sword, prompting a confrontation. Ben transforms into Fast Track but is unable to defeat George, 
who uses the sword to revert Ben back to his human form and opens a portal to leave. Confused and frustrated, Ben demands answers from Azmuth, who teleports him to a volcano on Primus. There, Azmuth reveals that he created the sword with the intention of harnessing universal forces, but was cautioned against it by his love, Zenith. Despite her warnings, Azmuth continued his work, leading to the sword's creation and subsequent misuse, resulting in the destruction of an entire planet. Azmuth explains that he then dedicated himself to peaceful sciences and created the Omnitrix as a penance for his past actions. However, he also reveals that he had hoped Zenith would notice his efforts for the creation of the Omnitrix. He then transports them to Earth in the Middle Ages, where Sir George used the sword named Askelon to defeat the Lucubra and seal away the Dagon, an extradimensional creature. Gwen tracks down George using a sample of his hair, leading the team to Area 51. While Gwen and Kevin battle the Forever Knights, Ben faces off against George, who offers a compromise. If he fails to defeat the Dagon, he will give Ben the sword. Ben agrees, and they return to the cave to inform the team of the arrangement. Gwen, disguised as Lucky Girl, attempts to steal one of Hex's spellbooks in his lair. However, Hex has set up a force field that absorbs Gwen's mana, slowly crushing her. Gwen pleads with Hex to help her defeat Adwegia and save Charmcaster who is still stuck in Legger Domain, but Hex is skeptical. He allows Gwen to take what she needs but asks her to leave him alone. Later, Gwen convinces Kevin to help her return to Legger Domain to aid Charmcaster. Using an algorithm she created, Gwen successfully predicts the true name of Legger Domain and they arrive there. They encounter Adwegia's scrutins, but Gwen's powers prove strong enough to create a force field to protect them. They are rescued by Ignatius, a freaking fighter who explains the situation in Legger Domain. As they journey to confront Adwegia, they encounter him trapped in a magical field draining his mana. Gwen frees him, but binds him to prevent him from using magic. Adwegia leads them to the usurper who stole his throne, who turns out to be Charmcaster. She absorbs Adwegia's soul to power a machine to resurrect her father, Spellbinder. However, when Charmcaster tries to kill Gwen and Kevin, Ben intervenes. Ben transforms into Edel and begins destroying the machine, but when he transforms into Chromastone to absorb the mana, he is overwhelmed and disintegrates. Gwen assumes her Anabag form, but Charmcaster uses the Alpha Rune to absorb her power and soul. Charmcaster then offers the souls of everyone in Legger Domain to Dagon in exchange for Spellbinder's resurrection. Spellbinder returns to life but disapproves of Charmcaster's actions, and his soul returns to the rift it came from. Dagon returns all the souls, including Ben, Gwen, and Kevin's, back to their bodies. Charmcaster is left feeling empty, having achieved her goal but lost everything in the process. Gwen shows sympathy towards Charmcaster, understanding the emptiness she feels, while Ben remains unsympathetic. Kevin agrees with Gwen, recognizing the difficulty of Charmcaster's situation. The team decides not to apprehend Charmcaster, leaving her to contemplate her choices. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin encounter Darkstar at Kevin's garage, where Darkstar tears out a page of Gwen's spellbook before fleeing. Ben chases him as fast track, while Gwen tends to Kevin. In flight, Darkstar summons the door to anywhere, leading Charmcaster to emerge and take him with her. Gwen blames Kevin for moving her spellbook, and they set out to track Darkstar to Legger Domain. In Legger Domain, Charmcaster and Darkstar develop a mutual attraction, with Charmcaster revealing her real name, Hope. She grants him access to Legger Domain with the symbol on his hand. Meanwhile, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin track Darkstar's energy signature to a power plant. They confront him, but he struggles to absorb electricity due to his reliance on mana. Gwen drains his mana, prompting Darkstar to return to Legger Domain for more power. In Legger Domain, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin confront Charmcaster and Darkstar. Michael and Charmcaster combine their powers, leading to a fight. Gwen tries to reason with Charmcaster, revealing her past relationship with Michael. How did you know his true name? We went out a couple times? Michael, hoping to combine his power with Charmcaster's, reveals his true intentions to conquer both Earth and Legger Domain. However, Charmcaster, realizing Michael never even knew her real name. What's my name, Michael? Heather. Turns on him and banishes him. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin confront Darkstar, with Charmcaster watching from afar. Alone in the ruins, Charmcaster sadly gazes at Michael's mask, signifying the end of their relationship. Ben is rudely awakened by a Cassiopeian Dream Eater, which latches onto his face, nearly suffocating him. He transforms into NRG to get it off and seemingly kills it. Ben then watches TV, which displays static and checks the house, only to be attacked by a DN alien. Transforming into four arms, he defeats the DN alien, causing a commotion in the neighborhood. Ben discovers that everyone, including his parents and neighbors, is missing. 
When Vildax appears and destroys his car, Ben transforms into Goop and then Ultimate Spider Monkey, but Vildax defeats him. Ben then decides to find Kevin but encounters Agregor and later Julie, both of whom disappear after a fight. Ben encounters Hex and crashes his car trying to avoid him. He then finds Gwen and Kevin, who ask for the Ultimatrix. Suspicious, Ben transforms into Tremalion and runs into the forest, where Gwen and Kevin reveal themselves to be Albedo. Albedo in Ben's dream, tries to take the Ultimatrix but fails and Ben wakes up to find the real Gwen and Kevin in his room. Albedo, meanwhile, is trapped in a nightmare, with several Ultimatrix aliens confronting him. As Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are in Kevin's garage, they are attacked by the Esoterica minions of Dagon, who are intent on freeing their master. They defeat the attackers and learn that the Flame Keeper's Circle is planning to release Dagon into their dimension. The team heads to the Flame Keeper's Circle headquarters, finding it abandoned and uses Clockwork's powers to see that the members have left to free Dagon. Meanwhile, Sir George rallies the Forever Knights at Area 51 to fight Dagon. When Ben, Gwen, and Kevin arrive at the SEAL location, they find the two factions in a fierce battle. Ben tries to reason with the Knights but is forced back into the Rust Bucket 3. They defeat the Knights and prevent further attacks with Gwen's mana shield. Gwen senses Esoterica soldiers in the Rust Bucket 3, but decides to leave the ship. They fight off the soldiers and head towards the SEAL, facing multiple battles along the way. Kevin uses a catapult to launch Ben across a canyon, where he transforms into Heat Blast and continues to the SEAL. As Sir George and the Knights approach the SEAL, they are attacked by Conduit Edwards, who mortally wounds Winston, Sir George's squire. George avenges Winston's death and reaches the SEAL, where Dagon unleashes Vilgax fused with a Lucubra, a powerful minion. Heat Blast arrives to confront Vilgax as he attempts to break the SEAL, revealing Dagon's dimension behind it. As the war rages between the Forever Knights and the Flame Keeper's Circle, Kevin grabs a weapon from a fallen knight and aids Gwen in battling the Esoterica. Meanwhile, Heat Blast and Sir George confront Vilgax, who is trying to break the seal containing Dagon. One's mana shield protects them from Vilgax's attacks as they strategize. However, Vilgax damages the seal enough for Dagon to release a wave, turning all living beings into Esoterica, except those shielded by Gwen's magic. Vilgax continues his assault, but Heat Blast melts the ground under him, trapping him temporarily. Kevin informs Sir George that his helmet can protect him from Dagon's influence, but George refuses, relying solely on Ascalon. Dagon grants Vilgax more power, allowing him to break free and resume his attack. Meanwhile, Gwen and Kevin retreat to Gwen's house to find a spell to contain Dagon. Despite being attacked by Esoterica, they manage to enter Gwen's house and protect themselves with a mana dome. Back at the seal, Dagon grows impatient with Vilgax's failures and takes control of Gwen's mind, forcing her to aid him. Kevin follows Gwen while Edel and Sir George continue to battle Vilgax. As Gwen approaches the seal, Dagon transforms her into her animate form and attempts to break the seal. Kevin intervenes, shielding Gwen with metal to resist Dagon's control. He then protects Ben and George with metal caps as well. Together, they confront Vilgax, demanding answers on stopping Dagon and reversing the esoterica transformation. Vilgax, now abandoned by Dagon, faces them with Siphon's arrival. However, a powerful tremor signals Dagon's escape as his laughter echoes ominously, revealing his omnipresent presence. With Dagon breaking the seal and facing off against the team, Sir George, Vilgax, and Siphon, the stake of planet Earth hangs in the balance. Vilgax disappears, leaving Dagon to summon waves of Esoterica to attack. Gwen and Kevin hold off the Esoterica. Ben transforms into Wade Big and then Ultimate Wade Big to battle Dagon, but Yuna's attacks have little effect. Dagon retaliates, causing Ultimate Wade Big to revert to Ben, who is left unconscious in the water. Gwen and Kevin struggle against the Esoterica, but ultimately, Gwen manages to shield them. Dagon confronts Gwen, leading her to fear for Ben's safety, but Kevin reassures her. George fights Dagon, but is eventually overwhelmed and seemingly disintegrates into dust, leaving only Askelon behind. Vilgax returns with Siphon and a machine designed to absorb Dagon's powers. The machine successfully absorbs Dagon, granting Vilgax immense power. Vilgax attacks the team, forcing them to retreat to Gwen's house and later to the plumber's base. Vilgax follows them, wreaking havoc and defeating Gwen and Kevin. Ben confronts Vilgax in a final battle, and manages to absorb Dagon's powers from Vilgax into the sword. Now with godly powers in his hands, Ben does not know what to do with it. Vilgax asks him to use this power to rid the world of all evil, which would actually wipe out billions of lives. However, with the arrival of Julie, Ben is conflicted and recalls all his previous adventures. Without saying a word, he uses the power to restore everyone affected by Dagon's transformation. Julie, moved by Ben's maturity, kisses him for the first time. 
Afterwards, Ben returns Ascalon to Azmuth, who gives him a new Omnitrix and hints at granting him master control on his 18th birthday. The episode ends with Ben, Gwen, Kevin, Julie, and Ship together, marking the end of the series. So that was Ben 10 Ultimate Alien from beginning to end in detail. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel for similar content.